Since January of 2020, Iceland's Reykjanes Peninsula has been the site of an unusually high level of volcanic activity. In only a 49-month-long time span, a series of 12 magmatic intrusions have occurred, five of which resulted in volcanic eruptions. Yet, this sequence does not represent the only instance where a cluster of closely spaced volcanic eruptions occurred at the same volcano or group of closely spaced volcanoes within Iceland. To help understand what the next few years of the Reckonus Peninsula's eruptions might bring, I think we should look at the Krafla Volcano's 1724-1729 Maivatan fires and 1979-1984 Krafla fires for comparison. The Krafla Volcano can be found in north-central Iceland, where its central caldera is located 35 kilometers east of the town of Fosshol. While Krafla does contain a large central caldera, this feature is very ancient, and much of its recent activity has instead been defined by fissure eruptions, which occur along sections of a 100-kilometer long stretch of land where the crust is spreading apart to the caldera's north and south. This represents the site where two tectonic plates are spreading apart, the Eurasian plate is moving to the east, while the North American plate is moving towards the west. This spreading apart creates a series of cracks and fissures in the rock which act as weak points and thin the underlying crust, allowing spaces which hot material in the mantle can intrude into. The reason why clusters of eruptions sometimes occur in a short time span at several of Iceland's volcanoes is that the very rifting I just described does not always occur in an even manner. Rifting can occur at a fairly constant rate for several centuries at a rate of several centimeters a year, only to be followed by a brief decade-long increase where several hundred years' worth of spreading rapidly occurs. These rapid rifting events might be caused due to built-up stress from several centuries of uneven spreading across the specific length of a divergent plate boundary being released in a short time span, which acts as a widening weak point which magma then repeatedly intrudes into for a time. The Maivadan fires began in 1724 when a volume of magma intruded its shallow depths in the crust, heating regional groundwater and permafrost and causing it to flash to steam. This then rapidly expanded before breaking overlying rock creating a powerful explosion that carved the 350 meter wide Vichy Mar crater. The next eruption occurred three years later and produced a similar volume of ash emissions occurring when an additional intrusion sent magma 1800 meters to the west of Vichy. This eruption was not purely explosive as it also produced a lava flow that covered several square kilometers. During the next two years, three additional moderately explosive to effusive eruptions occurred, and by the time the entire sequence had ended, 29.2 square kilometers were covered in 0.45 cubic kilometers of lava. During the 1975 to 1984 Krafla fires, every single eruption was either completely non-explosive or only produced a small volume of ash. The initial fissure eruption was small in size and occurred in the north-central section of the caldera. It covered a small area in lava and then ceased erupting. The subsequent eruption occurred further to the south, while the next three each occurred further and further north. Each time a new eruption occurred, the extent at which lava could erupt onto the surface expanded. The last two eruptions from Krafla in 1981 and 1984 were the largest of the group, covering a majority of what would later become its 36 square kilometer and 0.3 cubic kilometers volume lava field. Both of these Krafla fires have a few similarities. For one, each eruption during a strong rifting episode seems to have the same degree of explosiveness or lack thereof. Second, as time progresses, the extent of a fissure which lava can erupt continues to expand perpendicular to the axis of spreading. This goes to our third point where although not always true, eruptions seem to get larger and larger in volume on average as time progresses. Fourth, the highest rate of eruptions seem to occur sometime between 50% and 67% of the way through the rifting episode. Fifth, less than one half, but at least one third of magmatic intrusions during a rifting episode seem to result in a volcanic eruption. In the context of the Reckonus Peninsula, this information suggests that every single eruption that will occur during the current rifting episode will probably be completely effusive unless lava erupts into the ocean or a lake. However, it also suggests that the fissure underlying Greenvik will continue to expand, causing eruptions to move closer and closer to the town, perhaps eventually in the middle of it, and then maybe even off the town's coastline. However, not all intrusions will result in a volcanic eruption as seen during November 10th to 12th of 2023, where a magmatic intrusion failed to cause an eruption. 
As a final note, I would like to thank my new patron Alex Hunt for supporting this channel.